What's happening? Brian Tong here with the show currently known as Googleicious. We're back in, I don't know about you all, but this week feels like the week of the smartwatch with announcements and leaks galore. Now, the Google announced Android Wear is now cross-platform with iPhone through the Android Wear app on iOS. That's right, Android smartwatches will work with your Apple iPhone. It officially only supports the LG Watch Urbane and watches moving forward right now. But come on, this is a big move and it's Android. They aren't going to lock everyone out like Apple does. Now, that's where users on the interwebs come in and they tried out their watches like the LG G Watch R and the Moto 360. And with a quick factory reset, these watches and others currently work with the new iOS Android Wear app, but unofficially. So you can try this out, but just a heads up, it's not technically supported. Now, Apple Watches still aren't flying off the shelves, and this is another strong move by Google and friends. We also talked about the new Moto 360 last episode, and if there's an award for one of tech's worst kept secrets, this might be it right now. We know how Motorola made a boo-boo tweet a couple of weeks ago, and Brazil's FCC revealed there might be two models. Now it's Hello Moto HK that has leaked the first images of the two different sizes for the 360L and the 360S watch faces side by side that feature the same leak design we've seen. EvLeaks is also back at it, releasing an image of the two different color designs we can expect to see. And new renders from website UpLeaks have now revealed a sport variant of the new Moto 360 featuring black, white, and orange as its primary colors. The standard watch design is expected to be available in September, and the sport version is expected to arrive in November. But we'll hear plenty more about this at IFA 2015 in Berlin. But what might be the Android watch to look out for this year? Forget about Android. How about the best looking smartwatch to date, period? It's the Huawei watch we saw at Mobile World Congress. Now, the Amazon pages have been pulled down now. But it's been revealed the watch will come in four variants based on color and material, ranging from stainless steel with a leather band starting at $349 and as high as $699 for an all-gold-plated stainless steel version. A deleted Huawei tweet also pointed to a September 2nd announcement with a curious iOS compatibility that might have been foreshadowing the recent Android Wear app announcement. So again, stay tuned to IFA. And I know there are still remnants of BlackBerry loyalists that are hoping somehow, some way, the company can dig itself out of the ground and give you all something to look forward to. Well, this could be it after detailed leaked images of the often rumored Venice phone have made it to the web detailing its slide out physical keyboard that looks nicely executed from the pictures. You also see this includes both a SIM card slot and an SD card slot for expansion. Images of the camera point to an 18 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization. The phone looks to be running Android and might come with some sort of a BlackBerry skin, but we'll wait and see. And really, this might be the phone that came out three years too late, but it's unique enough and I'm curious. But if you're really curious and you wanted to see what happens when you put your brand new Galaxy Note 5 stylus in backwards, don't do it. We didn't get to talk about this because we were gone last week, but videos everywhere showed off how accidentally putting in the S Pen offers no resistance at all, but could also end up jamming in the phone and also cause it to break pen detection once that happened. Now you can see this happening if a kid got a hold of your phone or if you're in a rush, you might even do this yourself. It's clearly a design flaw, but what's Samsung's response? We highly recommend our Galaxy Note 5 users to follow the instructions in the user guide to ensure there are no issues. Basically, they're saying you're sticking it in wrong. And you know what this deserves? Come on, son! Seriously, this is a flaw, and they aren't gonna figure it out in any kind of fix or create a way to prevent this. Their answer is just read the manual. Yikes. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Keep emailing us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.